Regardless of denomination, conventional Sunday sermons normally don't allow for the rich world of questions many of us want to ask but are afraid to do so. Gospel Conversations takes a creative approach to attaining a deeper understanding of the gospel and what it means to us today and is not afraid of questioning and tackling taboo or tricky subjects. The controversial topic of this conference and the many questions it raises is a prime example. For those who don't know, Gospel Conversations hosts a monthly live talk in Sydney, normally the first Friday night of the month, which is then published online. Uh, now, without any further ado, I will hand over to Dr. Tony Goldsby-Smith, Tony is the co-founder and president of Gospel Conversations. He will introduce the topic and the speaker. I just want to say a few words of uh, introduction about Gospel Conversations. Um, Lorraine suggested I talk a little bit about why and uh, uh, you know, wh where it's going to and its history. That would make it sound a lot more organised than it is, um, but there's nothing so helpful to organisation as retrospectivity, so here goes. Um, it's actually been around in, in, a, in a lot of forms over the years, but really I think the thing that crystallised the modern version was uh, my daughter and her friends who were, you know, 19, 20, university, postmodern world, really coming up against fairly uh, deep, I suppose, challenges to faith. And against that, I, I thought that what they were being offered was trivial, 20-minute sermons, and it was an unequal contest between uh, you know, the postmodern world that a lot of young people walk into and what was being offered. Um, and so, uh, so we began gospel conversations uh, really with them in mind and with them as our first audience, and it's grown. We decided to put a few years ago, put up some stuff on a website for those who weren't there, and then a few, you know, a few months later or a year later, someone said to me, you realise people from all around the world are listening to this? And I said, what? And um, we get, started getting these wonderful emails, and the ones I feel sorriest for are sort of in Midwestern America, saying, uh, this has changed my life, but I'm now, you know, it's confirmed what I hope was true, but I'm out on a limb now. <laughs> uh, can you help, help us more? Uh, so it's, um, it's been a journey of um, growth. I think part of what we've realised about Gospel Conversations is that since uh, we funded ourselves, um, it gives us a lot of independence and that's actually quite important because um, I think part of the problem with the modern church is, is a narrow focus of specialisation being tied to one position, whereas we're not. And that independence, uh, I think, is proving quite useful, at least in this topic anyway. Um, why? What's the philosophy behind Gospel Conversations? I want to say just a quick bit about that to put it in context, because we're not focused specifically on any one topic, uh, including this one. Um, and I suppose uh, two little stories would explain it. Um, firstly, uh, years ago when I was teaching at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, my mentor and, and great friend who wouldn't call himself a follower of Christ but is one of the great intellects in my field and a mentor of mine, told me once, he said, Tony, you're dangerous. You're dangerous to both sides of Christianity. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's the fundamentalists or there's the sort of existential, which he meant charismatic sort. Some people think it's the truth's in a fundamental text. Some people think the truth's in an experience. He said, you don't. You're in the middle. You, you think faith's a work of art. And he actually was right. Um, and, and the very first, uh, one of the very first um, things we said about gospel conversations is you'll think of your life as a painting and God's wanting to see what, what picture you're going to paint with it. He's not telling you what picture. But the best we can do is, you know, provide more, more colours and textures to paint, paint the picture with. So I think that remains a good way of thinking of gospel conversations. And, and um, we've, uh, um, on the website, which has just been refurbished, and, and we're going to 
you know, do re-releases of some of the old talks. There's a phenomenal set of resources, over 100 talks, because we have great friends around the world who are really, I think, you know, powerful advocates of the gospel and inquirers, and if you haven't looked at the website, by all means do, you know, Ian Proven, John Walton, Miroslav Volf, Edwin Judge, Mark Strom, it's just a, an absolute wondrous array. We pick people who, we're gonna, who are, we think, exploring the gospel in what we'd like to call the creation theology way, and, um, and those resources are fabulous. And we only intend to put more effort into, for instance, for some of the better ones, when I say better ones, more unusual ones, for instance, my interviews with Edwin Judge, which have been hugely uh, helpful to lots of people, we might turn into books and start publishing stuff just to make more resources available. Um, a quick word about what I'd like to call the epistemology of gospel conversations. Um, you know, one of the things that makes me really cranky about the modern church, I mean, I'm, I'm involved in corporate life and innovation's my game and it just irritates me and disappoints me so much that, you know, the church is so conservative um, I had a great conversation with one of the bishops in Sydney of, about 10 years ago about creativity and um, he just brushed it aside, said, oh, you know, I, I'm actually here for, to protect the truth. And I thought, oh, that's the end of that conversation. It's kind of like going into a corporate office and saying, no, don't talk to me, I'm the audit officer. And I think, like, Rob, his name's... It's Rob Forsyth. He's a great guy because he, he gave me permission to tell this story. It's sort of like, let me introduce myself. I'm the audit manager. You know, that's like so many Christians have got... It's not a great brand, guys. Um, but anyway, to his credit, he wrote back to me um, about a few days later. He said, I've been thinking about what you said and I've got to apologise. He said, I realise I have no, th no theology for creativity. That's what he said. And I need one. So... I just, I guess what we feel and what I feel particularly is, is that Christianity is not, there's not a closed curriculum. God's big and, and finding the knowledge of God is like an endless sea. You know, you put your toe in the water and if somebody said, have you gone and swum in the sea, you would say yes, but you ha in a way you haven't because it's so endless. And I think uh, the, the, the broad exploration and inquiry of who God is and what his project is and who Christ was is never ending. So that sort of epistemology of inquiry into mystery, relentless inquiry into mystery is really what drives us. Um, I'll finish by explaining quickly uh, a quick model of inquiry. This is the best you'll get, it's Aristotle. Um, these are Aristotle's famous four questions. If you want to inquire, he said there are, there are four questions and only four, and they have to be asked in order, otherwise you'll never learn anything. Um, the first question is, is it? Nobody learns if nothing's relevant. Why should I be bothered about this topic or area of interest? Um, most of us, are, you know, on this particular topic of universalism would be there, but I actually think it's a bigger topic and it's going to get bigger because one thing I can say is that whilst Christians might be comfortable with it, any bright cr Christian in a nanosecond gets that the kind of... Cr the obverse of the gospel you're telling me is that I'm out of it and you're in it. Um, and um, so that's the is it question. Then the second one is having got to, over that, I, I'm now interested, it's what is it? You know, what's the model? What's the concept? This is paradigm stuff, which is really what, what uh, we're very interested in gospel conversations. Not, not, a, not a superficial inquiry, but uh, inquiry into the paradigms that shape how you look at something and re-paradigming. And, and that clarification of, of, well, what exactly does this mean? What do the terms mean? Is incredibly important when you're dealing with God because God is, in a sense, unknowable. So you've got to try to get the terms, not so much right, but uh, agreed. And I would say today, that's what, Robin, you're going to do with this. It's kind of a big what is it. You know, let's, let's kind of get the, let's, let's get the landscape right. And what, one of the big issues which people, I know that I've heard, Ryan Williams talk about and Tom Wright talk about is Christians need a better big picture. So that's what Robin will do today is a big picture within which we can then, and you can have all this big picture without yet agreeing. Having got that, you get to the third phase, which is uh, if that were true, how would it work out? It's like a mental prototyping. How would this work out? How would, what, a, how, uh, what would be the implications and the modifications of that, the sort of operating model? And, re and that's really the second uh, 
Saturday. The second Saturday would say, well, if, it were, if universal salvation were true, what would be the implications of that? And, and by corollary, what would be the implications of, it, if it, of, a, of, of believing the opposite? And I think they're extremely, that's a very significant you know, uh, and useful inquiry. Um, and uh, it'll be a bit of a cram day with more than Robin in, but um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's very important. His final question was, when you've worked all this out, you kind of get to a, what he called the final cause and you know why things are, but that's the end of the journey. So your job today, Robin, is kind of, what is it? Let's give me the landscape. Um, I, I, uh, I think, Robin, you, I love you because you've, 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 you're a quietly courageous man and I think what you've done to a controversial topic, you've just got a very nice, gracious way about it and um, oh, that's a gift to us all. I tend to be more polemical. I think you're, you'll be much more useful to us. So <laughs> let's give Robin a warm welcome. <laughs>